start by talking about what we decided on capital. So we had a very small amount of capital to allocate, uh, you know, less than the cost of one interchange. And so what I really did was I listened to what citizens were saying at our policy committees and listened hard to what council was saying were their priorities. And we chose to allocate that capital in what I call surgical ways. Uh, ways that you could get people to work on projects, um, multiple very small projects. So some of that is going to get a few parks that are almost fully funded, just over the hump, so that we can finish that work, uh, as well as support the good work of Parks Foundation Calgary. Some of that money is going to a grant for community associations and community groups who need to fix their roof, who need to install a new boiler, these relatively small projects that can make a huge difference for people in community. Some of it is going to build new pathways, including a multi-use pathway along 42nd Avenue Southeast where there's a lot of employment and really no sidewalks. So here's an opportunity for us to increase pedestrian and cyclist connectivity. That's not a bike lane, it's not a cycle track, it's a pathway off the road. We're going to spend a little bit of money in urban forestry to maintain our tree canopy in the city. I was interested that that one passed unanimously. I thought that would be a little bit controversial. And we're going to spend a fair amount of money making sure that our rec facilities are maintained and in good shape. And after what happened at the Fairview Arena earlier this year, it was really important to me that that never happen again. So I'm very pleased with what Council has chosen to do on this. Oh, and we're buying a few LRT cars. So that's on the, uh, the non-residential. Oh, now we're getting to the hard stuff. Okay, so we're ready. Your proposal was 1%, but now we're hearing Jeff Fielding is talking, he can do 2.25. So yeah, 1.25. 1, 1. So, it's not 1.2, isn't it? <laughs> this is very confusing. Mm -hmm. Let me try to make it less confusing. <laughs> Understanding the problem that businesses, particularly small businesses, are facing in the city, I went to city administration and said, what else can you do? And can I pass those savings directly on to the business taxpayer? So for the first time ever, at least since I've been in this chair, we're looking at a differential tax rate for homeowners and for businesses. Homeowners already enjoy the lowest residential property taxes in the country. Businesses have been higher. And so what I am proposing is a 1% uh, cut to the tax increase that will come from wages and salaries, but that that will be applied directly to business customers so that they can kind of deal with the shift. Frankly, all this confusion on the floor of council is that Mr. Fielding says, nah, I told you one before, I might be able to go to 1.25. So we're gonna have a little debate about that remaining 0 0.25, but that's the idea. Does that help? So now also, he was talking about getting it down to 10%. How much more do you have to put in to get ah. it to 10? So if we put in another 0.25, um, and I have to check his math because it's not quite working for me, but if we put in another 0.25, that means we'll get we'll cap all business property tax increases at 10%. Most businesses downtown would pay way less, but everyone um, would not would pay a maximum of 10. 10's not good enough, by the way. So, you know, I would like to see that as it has been in past years at five. I don't want to solve that problem today because council has set up three expert task forces to look at how to do that beyond the band-aids that we've applied the last couple of years. And I'd like them to do their work. So we're not going to stop at whatever we stop at today in terms of what the businesses will pay, but I'd like to give them over the Christmas break and into January to think about other options for us rather than just putting it all on the residential taxpayer today. Okay. But I wanted to send a signal today during budget that we're starting the work even now, and that work will continue. And I've said it many times, I'll say it again. For the last two years, we've proven to small businesses we've got your back, we have your back. And then you're going to set up a different uh, taxation system, small and large. Uh, how, that's one of, that's how one do of you the, determine who's small ah, and who's large? That's an excellent question. So that's one of the options. In the past, we've never been able to do that because the legislation said everyone has to pay the same tax rate. Recent changes to legislation have allowed us to have a differential tax rate for small business. It's something I've lobbied for for a long time. And I believe the legislation actually defines what small business is. I think it's 50 employees across Canada, don't quote me on that, but there is a, a definition that we can work with. And that's one of the things I'd like to explore with those expert task forces over the next couple months, because I really want to make sure that money we're saving 
or money that we're spending to help business is primarily helping local businesses and not large multinationals. So, so, basic, so basically, so basically, they're making it more complicated. I think they're making it so complicated. It sounds like city administration is going to find sixteen million dollars. You're going to take that money and you are going to lower the non-residential property tax rate and you're going to keep the residential property tax rate the same. Correct. We're going to find savings and we're going to apply them only to the non-residents. All we're talking about in there is what the amount is. Yeah. It's right. not that complicated. Thanks everybody. A small and large business thing, what would that mean then for taxes for the Cadillac Fairbies for the world? Because you, as you said, a lot of the assistance has gone to companies that really That's right. don't need it. Like well, I'm not going to say they don't need it, no. because they are landlords of small businesses as well. It gets very complicated, but I think we have to see a number of shifts. There has to be a residential, non-residential shift, and I think there should also be a shift within the business class so that we protect small businesses more.